Hey guys, this is Josh Carney for the Music Tech Help Guy channel, and today I want to talk to you about five methods of recording acoustic guitar. These aren't the only methods uh, that you can use to record acoustic guitar, but they're the five main methods that I use. For all these examples, we're going to be using condenser mics. We're going to be using an AKG C414 XL2. I typically use condenser mics on acoustic guitar because they have a much wider frequency response than dynamic mics and ribbon mics. Dynamic mics and ribbon mics typically roll off in the high end and don't capture all of the high frequency content that we need. So I'll be using, uh, I typically recommend using condenser mics for all acoustic guitar recordings. So before we get into the five different recording techniques, let's talk about stereo versus mono recordings. Um, for one of the methods we're going to use, we're going to use one mic. It's a mono method. Uh, the other four, we're going to use two mics. So those would be stereo methods. So I'll typically use the one mic mono method when I'm going to basically just layer up two guitars. I'm going to record the guitar twice and then pan it left and right. Um, if I'm just going to have one guitar in the mix by itself, not layered up with another guitar, I'll typically use a stereo method. So first, let's talk about the one mic method. Uh, one of the first considerations that you have to think about is the distance of the mic to the source. The closer the mic is to the source, the more bass response you're going to have, and the further back, the less bass response you're going to have. So with any of these uh, miking techniques, the distance of the mic to the source affects the bass response. This is called the proximity effect. Another thing that we need to take into consideration is not just the distance from the source, but also where the mic is located on the guitar. So if the mic is over the tone hole, you're going to get a lot of uh, bass frequencies. As you move up toward, up toward the frets, you're going to get more high frequencies. As you move down below the tone hole, maybe toward the bottom of the guitar, you're going to get more of a boxy sound. So typically when I use one mic, I like to place the mic somewhere just above the tone hole. So I get a little bit of the bass and a little bit of the treble uh, up from the frets. Another consideration with all of these techniques is the mic's polar pattern or pickup pattern. This is the direction in which the mic hears sound. So uh, there's three main uh, polar patterns. You have cardioid, which the mic hears from mostly from the front of the mic, uh, bidirectional, where the mic hears from the front and the back, and omnidirectional, where the mic hears from all around. Now there's also several different uh, variations of cardioid, like supercardioid and hypercardioid, but we're not going to be using any of those today. So for the one mic method, you can use cardioid, bidirectional, or omnidirectional. Uh, it's just a matter of how much room ambience uh, you want in your recording. If you use bidirectional or omnidirectional, you're going to pick up more of the room ambience in the recording. If you use cardioid, you're going to pick up mostly just the guitar without all the extra room ambience. So for this example, I'm just using the cardioid pickup pattern. Okay, so our first stereo method is called XY. An XY uh, miking method basically means that you have two condenser mics that are both cardioid at a 90 degree angle. What this allows us to do is it allows us to have this bottom mic here pick up sort of the low end in the mid range of the bottom of the guitar, and it allows this top mic to sort of pick up the high, uh, high end from the strings and from the neck. So this is again called XY and you take two condenser mics and you face their capsules at a 90 degree angle and they're typically going to be in cardioid. If they're not in cardioid, it's actually something different, which we'll get to in just a moment. So let's just hear a musical example in XY. Our next stereo method is called Blumline. Blumline is identical to XY because we have two condenser mics at a 90 degree angle, but the difference is that the mics are now bidirectional as opposed to cardioid. So our top mic is going to pick up from the front and the back, and our bottom mic is going to pick up from the front and the back, which gives us sort of like a four zone pickup area. We have a sort of front left and right and a back left and right. 
The advantage to Blumline is it allows us to pick up a lot of the ambience and room tone. Um, I'd highly recommend that you don't use this method if you're just recording from home or in your bedroom, uh, but if you're actually in a pro studio like this, the room's been acoustically treated and sounds nice. So we may want to actually pick up some of the ambience of the room, and that's what Blumline does for us. So let's hear a Blumline example. So our next stereo method is a spaced pair, also known as an A-B method. Uh, you can also angle these mics a bit if you like. So for this method, I'm putting one mic up by the, the frets uh, to sort of pick up the high end, and one mic uh, down by the body to pick up the low end and the mid-range. The advantage of A-B and having a spaced pair is that the capsules aren't right on top of each, of, of each other. So this isn't a coincident miking technique, which coincident basically means the capsules are right on top of each other. When you space the pair, it actually spreads out the stereo image and gives you a wider stereo image. The other thing this does for us is it lets us uh, sort of directly pick up the high end up here and the low end up here, and the stereo image in your recording will reflect that. So you may have highs in the left channel and lows in the uh, right channel. Um, so this is gonna have a wider image than X, Y, and Blumline. So let's uh, give this a shot. So our last stereo technique is the mid-side method. The mid-side method uses two condenser mics, one in cardioid mode and one in bi-directional mode. So this top mic is our mid mic, it's in cardioid, just picking up the guitar from the front. And then we have our bottom mic here is our side mic, it's picking up the left and the right of the guitar. So the tricky thing about mid-side is that it's the most complex of all of the stereo miking techniques I've shown you so far because it requires some processing later on in our DAW to get the sound to work right. Essentially what we're gonna do uh, in Pro Tools later is we're gonna take this bottom mic, this side mic, and we're gonna separate the left and the right side of the capsule. So we'll actually end up with three channels of audio, not just two channels of audio. So in this example I'm gonna play, um, the, the signal's already been mid-side processed. So for this next section, I'm gonna to cut to Pro Tools and I'm gonna show you how to mid-side process our recording. All right, so let me show you guys how to process your mid-side recordings. This is just how you can do it in Pro Tools, uh, but you can do this in pretty much any DAW. So here we have our mid mic recording and above it we have our side mic recording. I also have both channels going into an aux track with a little bit of EQ, as well as a little bit of compression on the channel just to sort of uh, even it out a bit. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our side mic and we actually need to separate this into a left and a right channel. And the way we can do that, because remember this is our bi-directional mic, we have to separate that bi-directional mic into a left and right side of the capsule. So we're gonna duplicate that track and our side channel is gonna become our left channel. So we're gonna pan that left and our duplicated side channel is gonna become our right channel. So we pan that right. So let's just name this side left and side right. So there we go. So in order to separate the left and right side of our side mic, what we need to do is actually invert the phase of our right channel. So basically we have two identical channels here for left and right, and you can see they're perfectly in phase. We have a compression for a compression, a refaction for a refaction. And what we're gonna do with this right channel is go up to the audio suite in Pro Tools. This is how you do it in Pro Tools. 
go down to Other and Invert. So by selecting the track and pressing the Render button, what this does is it inverts the phase of uh, one of our side channels. So now our right side channel is 180 degrees out of phase with the left side channel, which effectively separates the front and back of the capsule. So this is what it sounded like before. And this is what it sounds like after with the mid side processing turned back on. The only real downside of mid-side is you'll notice on the, the aux track down there that the left channel is significantly louder than the right channel, and that's because the mid-channel is in phase with the left channel, but out of phase with the right channel, causing a, a bit of phase cancellation. So it's a problem we have to deal with with mid-side, but it does create a very, very cool stereo effect. So these are five different methods to recording acoustic guitar. Again, they're not the only methods to recording acoustic guitar. They're just five methods that I commonly use. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Hey guys, if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel to see multiple new videos added every week. Also, you can check out carneymediagroup.com where you can view all of my video tutorials, search for specific topics, download the videos ad-free, and in some cases you can purchase session content so you can work along with me in the video. Also, please consider giving a monthly contribution at patreon.com forward slash musictechhelpguy. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.